Now we have uh, Frax co-founder Sam Kazemian presenting Frax V3, the final stablecoin. Round of applause. Uh, really happy to be here at a stable summit, uh, unstable summit. Hopefully it's not bad luck that it's called unstable summit, but um, really happy to give this talk. It's on Frax V3, and I'll give a short presentation about our idea and philosophy behind designing the newest version of Frax and how it works. But first, I want to go over the way that we thought about Frax V3, which is basically looking at things from first principles. And so this slide is the actual US dollars balance sheet. So when we designed Frax V3, the first thing we thought of is let's actually go back and look at how the US dollar actually works. You know, not like reading tweets about people saying it's a Ponzi or anything, but actually just look at how it works. And so on, on the right is the actual liabilities of the Federal Reserve. You can actually see it's 5.8 trillion uh, right there at the top, the monetary base, the MB uh, as, as it's called. And then on the left side is the collateral, the weekly balance sheet that the Federal Reserve actually uh, publishes every every week on its site. And so at the very, very bottom, you can see it says 6.01 trillion. So if you actually look at the way that the Federal Reserve does its balance uh, balance sheets, you can see that they consider the dollar actually completely collateralized and even slightly over 100% collateral ratio, which is a DeFi term that, that people like to use, right? Uh, the main thing, though, here is what is most of that 6.01 trillion collateral, right? We know that it's actually US Treasury bills. The Federal Reserve actually announces that it's Treasury bills. And so what are Treasury bills? Structurally, what actually is the, the UST bill, right? And so the UST bill, right, it's just a promise to repay dollars out into the future at, at some rate, right? And so this is the US Treasury's yield curve, right, which is the actual price of treasuries based on their, their maturity rates. And what the dollar actually is structurally in, in terms of how it works is that there's some socially expected value uh, that, that the Fed tries to keep the dollar at, right? Everyone knows the, the CPI plus 2.5% target. That, that the Fed's mandate is in terms of keeping the, the US dollar's purchasing power, right? And the entire, essentially, balance sheet of the Fed, other than mortgage-backed securities and, and some other debt, is US T-bills. It's actually the debt of the US government itself, right? And so the, the dollar is essentially something that's backed by its own debt, and that's its actual stability mechanism, right? Its stability mechanism is the future promise to repay it, its own uh, its own debt, and so this is actually a really interesting and, and handy plot for the the U.S. dollar peg. Um, people don't call it a peg because people don't speak in DeFi terms and, and everything. But the main thing that I always like to say is the the U.S. dollar is a stable coin. It's actually pegged to CPI plus 2.5 percent. That's actually the the actual Fed's mandate. And so when people say inflation is super high, that's just DeFi speak for saying the US dollar is depegged, right? And so in this chart, you can actually see for most of the actual past 30 years, the US dollar has been pretty good at keeping its peg, other than one maybe small blip at you know 2008. Uh, and obviously the huge, huge blip at uh, COVID in 2020, right? And as you can see in the chart actually here, the, the actual rate is now parallel back to the, the, the flat 2.5%. So it is technically uh, back or very, very close to peg uh, again, other than the time where it was heavily depegged. So another way to say it is if the US dollar was actually a stable coin, it would have been depegged to 95 cents on curve for like the past to two and a half years, right? Uh, that's kind of the DeFi translation of it. So with that kind of insight, what we thought of with Frax V3 is, what if we could actually bring the whole yield curve uh, on chain, right? What if we could actually bring both short-term yield and long-term yield into the Frax V3 protocol and actually make it so that that's how Frax actually works? 
And so there's two things we, we designed, one of them being FRAX bonds that we call FXBs. And what they are is they're not real-world assets. They're not tokenized T-bills that give you the right to redeem for some custodian somewhere. They're just utility tokens that basically give you the right to actually take FRAX from the, the maturity contract when the actual bond tokens timestamp it actually comes due. So there's FRAX bonds of various maturities. There's two-year, five-year. There can be anything that governance actually passes. And the idea behind this is the same exact structure as, as the U.S. dollar, right? And so when, when you think about the whole concept of the, the U.S. dollar, the reason people actually save in it, the reason people actually use treasury bills as savings vehicles is, is not what you hear most of the time on, on Twitter. It's not because the U.S. is the biggest army. It's not because you can, you can pay taxes in it and, and things like that. It's because of the socially expected value that the government can actually make to keep the dollar pegged at the, the Fed's mandate, right? And everything else is kind of downstream of that. Obviously, if you have the biggest army, maybe you can conquer a bunch of countries with oil and, and, and buy back the dollar and keep the peg. Or if you actually have a large economy, your, your tax bill can actually contract the supply of the monetary base, right, from the first slide. But the value of the dollar doesn't actually come from any of those things. It comes from the credible commitment to actually keep that value, the, the peg, intact. That's, that's basically the, the, real, the real value of the U.S. dollar, right? If you think about paying taxes, right? People in Venezuela have to pay taxes in bolivars. It doesn't make it not, uh, you know, hyperinflate. People flee the, the actual value until they have to pay taxes, right? It's, it's the entire ability to keep the dollar at peg and the credible commitment of it that actually brings value to the, the U.S. dollar. And so we tried to structurally design this as a DeFi protocol with Frax V3. We tried to actually bring the entire yield curve to the, the DeFi ecosystem. And so you can see the FRAX balance sheet on, on FRAX, uh, fax.frax.finance. And the thing is, it's updated in real time as governance issues FRAX bonds and, and, and uh, FRAX supply expands. You can actually see the uh, liabilities and, and the actual assets. And the interesting thing about this is that it looks exactly like how the Fed does its accounting directly. When there's bonds, the, the bonds itself are both assets, but then the backing of it is, is basically the most important thing, to see how the bond will be repaid. The same way that if the Federal Reserve says it has 6.01 trillion in assets, you want to see that when it actually repays the, those bonds in dollars, the dollar actually is at peg. And so that's exactly what we try to show with the FRAX V3 balance sheet. And this is just something that I think is a high-level concept that is a, a, a good idea to, to convey, especially at uh, Stable Summit, which is the, the classic uh, stablecoin trilemma design, which is the, the best design, actually, is, is not necessarily a stable coin that is coming out and saying, we've, we've figured out the trilemma, we've figured out exactly how to do scalability, decentralization, and, and, and peg tightness. But it's, it's one that actually solves the trilemma in a reasonable way and structurally looks similar to the asset that it's underlyingly trying to peg. And so that's why, from first principles, we went and actually looked at how the actual Fed conducts monetary policy and why the U.S. dollar itself is actually uh, valuable. And another point here uh, to, to make with FRAX v3 is that when we tried to bring the entire yield curve on chain, there's uh, two parts of the yield curve that's super important, right? There's uh, the, the short dated yield curve, right, which is short term rates, and the long part of the, the yield curve. And so with FRAX v3, we actually have an ability to bring the short-term yield rates with uh, staked FRAX. And that staked FRAX actually has the yield coming from short-dated treasuries and RWA partners. And then the long-dated bonds, which are the FXBs that we were talking about, we have the ability to mirror them with the same T-bills that essentially can make sure that these bonds are, are repaid and the FRAX's peg is credible when the actual uh, FXBs come due. So uh, 
that's the most important thing with, with Frax V3, which is to basically understand that the, the design and the motivation for us was to bring the entire yield curve on chain. And this is one thing that I think is very different and sets Frax apart from kind of a lot of the uh, new RWA projects and everything that focus on just the, the short-term yield rates because during low rates, right, when if, if the Federal Reserve actually cuts short-term rates uh, later this year, next year, all T-bill projects basically become fiat coins, right? They all, every, everyone that comes out with high yields, they all become USDC, whether they like it or not, right? Because they're just tokenized short-term treasury bills. But if they offered the full yield curve when short-term rates go down, long-term rates actually go up and become more valuable and, and, and more enticing, right? And so we wanted to think ahead of the curve, so to speak, and so when the long-term rates are, are very, very attractive, maybe next year, then a lot of FXBs can be issued and, and people can actually start saving in, in FXBs, debt that's actually denominated in FRAX that'll get repaid, and people can use those across all of DeFi. And overall, I think it's super important for everyone to consider that, you know, this, this time during 5.4% interest rates, it's pretty temporary, right? This is not going to be the case forever. And so what we wanted to do and accomplish was to design essentially what we call the final stable coin, the design that in every single yield curve situation from high rates to low rates, from, you know, large expansion of supply to contraction of supply, uh, Frax V3 can actually solve that and, and be something that people use and, and can rely on for, for sa safety, yield, and uh, overall rates. So thank you. And I always end on this slide because uh, everything is always just stable coins to us. So same thing with the dollar. If there's one thing to take away from it, uh, the dollar is just a stable coin. Everything is just a stable coin. LSDs are stable coins as well. So thank you.